Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. And uh, the ninth conference of the UN Convention Against Corruption continued its activities in the Red Sea Resort of uh, Sharm el Sheikh on Wednesday. Nile TV's correspondent, Hani Farag, conducted the following interview with James Anderson, lead the governance specialist, governance global practice. Joining us now on Native International, Mr. James Anderson, lead governance specialist in this field, governance global practice in the World Bank. Pleasure, sir, to have you on Native International. Thank you. My pleasure as well. Thank you a lot. So uh, my question, why is the World Bank interested in the issue of corruption? Well, the World Bank's mission is to help countries to eliminate poverty and to boost shared prosperity. And we realize that we can't do this without addressing the scourge of corruption. Yes. Corruption which hurts, uh, hurts poor people, it misallocates resources, and it inhibits growth. Yes. And so we need to address corruption. So you, you need to address corruption. But let me say, you are a specialist in a, 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 a domain uh, uh, such like uh, uh, governance, global practice in the World Bank. So uh, can you speak uh, or can you explain uh, how the World Bank uh, exerts some efforts in order to fight uh, corruption, in order to strengthen the capabilities of uh, the countries? Absolutely. So uh, we work with, uh, with countries on, top, on things like open government, uh, increasing transparency, access to information. Uh, all of these are institutions which require uh, active support from the government and also in some cases some uh, technical abilities. Uh, we support the use of, uh, in, of technology to strengthen the interface between citizens and the government. And uh, it also helps with, uh, helps with transparency. Uh, we also work with other uh, institutions of accountability like supreme audit institutions, uh, anti-corruption agencies, uh, etc. So actually in, in quite a large number of different ways we, we try to support countries to develop the institutions that make corruption less likely, to prevent it from happening in the first place. Yes. With this complicated situation uh, imposed uh, by COVID, imposed by uh, insecurity, uh, especially in this uh, continent of Africa, yes, uh, uh, to which extent uh, can really uh, corruption uh, be controlled? Uh, well, we, we definitely think that improvements can be made. Uh, and, uh, to, and corruption can be reduced. It, it cannot be eliminated. It'll never be eliminated completely, yes. but by being more transparent and having stronger institutions of accountability, uh, then it can be controlled. Now, you're right, under the situations of COVID, uh, it does make things more difficult, but it also uh, makes it even clearer how important it is to try to address corruption. Uh, we, we've found that uh, corruption not only uh, hurts poor people but undermines the ability of states to be able to respond to crises in general uh, and and it also just undermines uh, progress in many areas when when we did a survey asking stakeholders of what are the reasons that important reforms are not carried out uh, the most important cited reason was corruption yes. and so we we think it's absolutely important to pay uh, pay considerable attention to this yes. issue and it's, it's so important to uh, regain uh, some uh, confidence in the uh, in, in government institutions uh, from the point of view of people. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's, uh, this is where people get trust. They, yeah. they get trust from their own experiences, but also what they perceive. And, um, and the, uh, the more that corruption undermines that trust, it undermines uh, all sorts of uh, issues and all, all sorts of ways that the government needs to, to act. Yes. Mr. Anderson, thanks a lot for this interview. Well, thank you very much.